Yeah, like look how smooth it is. How's it going everyone? I'm Em. Welcome back to the Tech Block channel. I don't typically review TVs, but the one behind me here is seriously impressive once you look at the specs. This is a 4K, 120 hertz IPS panel that isn't edge lit. In fact, it has full array dimming. So the contrast on this TV, the deep blacks will seriously impress you. And I really do mean they will impress you. This nano cell TV model, and in fact, all of their nano cell TV models that have been released, there's plenty of different models to choose from, different TV sizes, all the way down to a 49 inch nano cell TV that is much, much cheaper than the 86 inch version. So these nano cell TVs are genuinely made to be affordable and they're meant to be very high end TVs at an affordable price point. All of them run at 4K 120 Hertz, unless you really downgrade to the lower end nano cell models. I think those will only go up to 60 Hertz. However, if you have a little bit extra cash, spend it on the higher end models as they will support 4K 120. On an IPS display with full array local dimming, it's just a beautiful experience gaming on this TV. Oh my God, man. I fired up Counter-Strike on here. We fired up Battlefield 5, turned on some ray tracing and all that. The visuals on this TV are not only gorgeous, but they're also very freaking smooth. In Counter-Strike, I put an RTX 2080 Super with this PC. We were playing it at 1440p, 120 hertz, and that's because nothing actually supports HDMI 2.1 just yet. Even my RTX 2080 Super couldn't actually run the TV at 4K 120Hz. HDMI 2.0B at the moment only supports 18 gigabit per second bandwidth. So at the minute, I'm limited to either 4K 60Hz on this TV, or I can drop the resolution down to 1440p and then run the TV at 120Hz. Not a problem whatsoever, but the reason why I can't even run it at that resolution is because of a bandwidth problem that this TV has solved. So if we take a look behind this TV right here, you're gonna find a bunch of RGB lighting as well as two high bandwidth 4K 120 Hertz HDMI ports at the back. The soon to be released next generation of consoles, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X will support the HDMI 2.1 port and it's important for them to support that port because they're gonna be capable of running at 4K 60 Hertz and more importantly, going beyond 60 Hertz, going all the way up to 4K 120 Hertz. And I think these consoles might even be able to run at 8K, but obviously maybe not at 120 Hertz. Fun fact, by the way, LG also sell 8K nano cell TVs. And what's cool about those is that you can either run them at 8K 60 Hertz and just get an unbelievably sharp image. 8K has four times as many pixels as 4K. So imagine this TV, but like four of these TVs put into like one TV. I can't imagine what kind of supercomputer you would need to run games at 8K though. But what's cool about their 8K TVs that you can run it at either 8K 60 Hertz, or if you wanna do some high refresh rate gaming, you can turn the 8K TV down to 4K and then run it at 120Hz. How sick is that, dude? What's also really important when it comes to gaming on a TV is low latency as well as variable refresh rate. Luckily, these nano cell TVs do support both. So they have a very cool feature called ALLM called Auto Low Latency Mode. So whenever you hop into a game like Counter-Strike, Battlefield, any game really, the TV will know that you've hopped into a game and it will automatically enable Auto Low Latency mode to ensure that you have a low latency gaming experience, especially in a first person shooter. You need things to be as responsive as possible. And this TV with its 4K 120Hz IPS panel and the auto low latency mode will definitely ensure a low latency gaming experience. I really didn't have any problem playing games like Counter-Strike. I ran it at 1440p 120Hz because I can't run it at 4K 120Hz because nothing supports HDMI 2.1 yet, but I ran the game at 1440p 120Hz. It was very smooth. I'm using the Logitech G915 wireless keyboard paired with a Razer Basilisk X hyperspeed mouse. So just like a wireless peripheral setup, but it was still a very playable game. Like, holy crap, mate, 120Hz with auto low latency. This TV is genuinely smooth. If you pair it with like a powerful enough graphics card, 
God, I was running it on a 2080 Super, you know, this TV definitely won't let you down. Especially once you hear about the fact that it supports variable refresh rate. That's right, FreeSync support is on this TV and I don't think they officially support G-Sync, but from my testing using an RTX 2080 Super, I turned on G-Sync on this TV and it ran without any problems whatsoever. So whether you have an AMD graphics card or a NVIDIA graphics card, G-Sync and FreeSync support seem to be a thing and of course they will eliminate all the screen tearing so that you can have the smoothest possible gaming experience which this TV definitely delivers. Once you're finally done gaming on this TV, this is how you actually control it. It comes with this lovely LG remote right here and it's kind of like a Nintendo Wii. There's like this pointing thingy and it's just a very easy TV to use in general. It runs off of LG's WebOS and I want to show you just how quickly you can switch between all of these apps. So I just went to YouTube, boom, you want some Spotify? We got Spotify. You can download a bunch of other additional apps for your TV, like Spotify, like Netflix, Twitch. There's so much apps on here, mate. Amazon Prime Video, anything you could possibly need is over here in the LG content store. If you don't want that, we have Netflix right here. There's also Apple TV. There is Prime Video and I just want to show you how quickly you can switch between all these apps right here. There's no waiting around with this TV. There's no time for loading things. It just loads all these apps up super quick. Boom, we're back on the PC, back on Spotify, back on YouTube. It is just such a responsive OS to use. It does also have a bunch of support for Apple stuff. So Apple TV supports, Apple AirPlay does of course work with this TV. And there's even a microphone button on the remote right here that when you press it, tech block on YouTube. It can do stuff for you. So it might go on YouTube for us and search up tech block. There you go, look, that's me. Uh, so yeah, you can just press the microphone button on the remote and it's going to start searching things up for you on the web. It genuinely works really well. So if you want to go on Netflix or something, open Netflix. Okay, I'll go to Netflix app. That's sick. Open YouTube. YouTube, go into YouTube app. All right, so that actually works surprisingly well. Yeah, man, that's how you navigate around the TV. It does have a bunch of settings that I can show you. This remote does also have like a bunch of buttons for Netflix, Prime Video, so you can legit just press one button and then you'll end up on Netflix if that's what you want. As for the different picture modes and settings that this TV offers, apparently the one that you should be using and the one that's actually like new on these LG Nano Cell TVs is their filmmaker mode. This is how like the directors of a movie intended their film to be watched and it is apparently the mode to be using when it comes to consuming content and you can even enable an auto filmmaker like auto change mode so whenever you go on to like a movie or something it'll just automatically switch over to the filmmaker mode for you so that you don't have to do it yourself but this tv does become extremely bright if that is what you want and during the daytime even in an extremely well lit environment the brightness of the tv uh, will definitely not disappoint you. You won't be like, oh, I wish this TV was a little bit brighter. It's freaking bright enough, man. Don't you worry. And at nighttime, you can even enable the energy saving modes as well as the eye comfort modes, which is kind of like flux on your PC. It'll just eliminate the blue light for you. And you can also enable a bunch of AI features to automatically adjust the picture on screen as this TV uses AI deep learning to actually enhance the image quality of the content that you're watching and it knows how a tree looks like, it knows how people look like, and it's just gonna enhance images and make things look even better thanks to AI deep learning and the Gen 3 A7 processor that is inside of here. And finally, let's quickly touch on what NanoCell actually does. So the technology is patented by LG, meaning that you're gonna only find this NanoCell tech in LG NanoCell TVs, nowhere else. But what it actually does is it uses extremely tiny, one nanometer size nanoparticles to filter out unwanted light wavelengths and just impure colors in general and enhance the accuracy and purity of specifically the colors green and red. But the viewing angles on this TV are genuinely next level. Here's like a video that I shot using like my phone going from side to side to the TV and you can see that no matter what angle you look at this TV from, it looks really good. Like the colors are accurate, you can see everything on screen, it doesn't matter where you're sitting in the room as long as you're somewhat in front of the TV, 
everything is gonna look 10 out of 10. In addition to all of that, the TV does also support Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, HDR10 Pro, HLG Pro, and there's even a HDR mode specifically for gaming called HGIG, which stands for HDR Gaming Interest Group. And believe it or not, this gaming interest group for HDR has been developed by Microsoft and Sony together coming along and developing this HDR gaming interest group and if the games that you're playing do support HGIG I would recommend you turn it on as it does actually improve image clarity in games and it is the HDR mode that you probably should be using when playing games after all it is made by Sony and Microsoft and I'm pretty sure this HGIG mode is going to be supported by just about most games coming out on the new consoles on PC most new games are going to support this new HDR standard and of course LG's nano cell TVs do fully support HGIG content as well as HDR10 Pro, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. There's so many freaking HDR specs and the specs in general on this TV are crazy. But there you go man, that's pretty much like most of the things covered with this new TV. I'm going to be working on building a new living room gaming setup. I've ordered a new uh, living room like TV stand so once that arrives I'm gonna hopefully have spaces to actually put the new next-gen consoles because I'm gonna buy the PS5 I'm gonna get the new Xbox Series X and of course I'm gonna be doing the unboxing video We're gonna be playing it on that TV once those consoles come out So I'm gonna be working on of course a full gaming setup tour But for the living room over the next coming weeks Especially once we get the new stand and once this new TV stand gets here I'll probably put together a new PC build for the living room so that we can actually properly play games on that TV but I think I have to wait until Nvidia's next gen cards to come out so that I have support for HDMI 2.1 so that I can actually run the TV at what it's meant to be running at which is 4k 120hz. At the minute though I'm stuck waiting for either next gen consoles to come out so I can actually run the TV at 4k 120hz or I just wait until next gen Nvidia or AMD cards come out and then, of course, I can run the TV at what it's meant to be running at instead of 1440p, 120Hz. But to be honest, even at 1440p, everything looks pretty damn sharp on the TV. Anyway, man, that has been it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to LG for sponsoring the video, of course. And shout out to Colo Light as well for sending over the RGB LED lights that I put behind the TV and made them go into like crazy rainbow effects. So I'll have a link down below in the description, of course, to where you can buy the TVs as well as the Colo Light LED light strips behind the TV. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you in another video soon where, of course, I'm going to have an update in a couple days about this entire setup and this new desk. Is this still on IKEA Linmon desk? It might be. But yeah. I've been M. Thanks for watching. Thanks to LG for sponsoring the video. Hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.